Here we go then. Does history beckon for Letes and Bet Gide? We will be watching the clock, but there is a reason that record of Tyranish Tabarmas has stood for 12 years. She's one of the all-time greats. And speaking of all-time greats, I'm delighted to be sitting alongside Sonia Rose Sullivan, who won the inaugural world title over 5,000 metres and reminded me is still the outdoor 2,000 metre world record holder from 1994 and an Olympic silver medal as well. Sonia, a very good evening. We're really looking forward to this tonight, but it's a massive, massive task this for Gide, isn't it? It really Absolutely. is. Absolutely. It's a really, really tough record. I mean, it's been there for 12 years and you know when you break it down into the pace per lap it you know it, it doesn't seem too difficult 69 second lap 68 67 but they do accumulate over time and you know it, it takes a toll on the athlete to concentrate and to keep that pace up over 12 and a half laps of the track um, but Gide she has a specific pace target here she's obviously practiced this in training and feels that if she starts off a little bit slower you know it's a the fine detail of one second slower for the first three laps and then gradually increasing one second for the next three laps and then again so it will be interesting to see how she hits those paces early on and um, how she can pick them up as the race goes on well we've got a little bit of assistance as a nice smile on the face of Esther Guerrero there. We have been allowed a small-ish crowd, and I mentioned that the stadium is about 15 metres below street level, and there's an amazing vista all along the main street, outside the confines of the stadium. People are lining along the ancient city walls. You might just be able to, to get a glimpse. And there is our first little indication of wave light. Now, we've got this great technology to help us well, mainly to help the commentators and the spectators, because I'm reliably informed that actually most athletes don't notice. You, you'll have an opinion on that in a moment, Sonia. But the blue lights that accompany the athletes around the track, that's for the pacemakers, and that is set at around about eight metres ahead of world record pace. You'll see the green lights flashing on their way round. The green light indicates a world record pace. Gide is ahead at the moment. Do you? Do you think they'll even be noticing that, Sonia? I mean, a couple of coaches have said to me, it's fine for you lot watching, but when they're in the heat of battle, that they already know what their pace should be. Well, I think the pacemakers definitely will be focusing on the lights and trying to keep pace with the lights. And towards the latter stages of the races, possibly um, Gide um, will be focusing on the lights as something to keep up with. So, three seconds outside world record pace. Tyranish de Barber went through in 2.48. So, she's got a little bit of work to do at the moment, Latessa and Bette Gide. Oh, that's what she asked for. So, she's OK at the moment. But we need to keep a very close eye when we get onto the middle section of the race where she knows she has to pick it up to 68s and then up to 67s. Guerrero has done a good job there, so it now comes down to Beatrice Chip Coetch. We mentioned at the start, I mean, when I first saw her name, Sonia, I thought she was going to have an attack on her PB. And brilliant that she's decided to come along and help out Latessa Bet-Gide in this quest for history. Well, I think Beatrice, she ran in Doha just under two weeks ago, 8.22 for 3,000 metres. And, um, you know, the season is so short this year and very few races that she didn't want to just go home and end the season early. And when she asked if there's any more races and was heard about this race she wanted to come and help to set the pace and to be involved in this world record attempt tonight and we are delighted that she has come along low 69s it's okay but we now need to start seeing this pick up a little bit towards 68 seconds it's been interesting Sonia the, the conditions I know you're slightly concerned about the humidity especially for Joshua Cheptegei's 10,000 meter attempt which will be coming up in around about 20 minutes time but as far as the wind is concerned it's dropped perfectly from quite a blustery afternoon well the wind does tend to pick up here in Valencia in the afternoon um, but you know we've been here for three days now and noticed each evening that it has dropped down so that was never really a concern um, I think Gide, you know, she looks like she is so focused here. And, you know, while she's got the, the back of Beatrice Kipkoetsch to, you know, keep her focus on, then um, she can 
be as relaxed as she is looking here right now and they are still clearly ahead of the green world record pace lights and sticking with the blue ones and um to go through here again now and that was about 68 second lap again so they're right on pace because this is what she wanted um, was to increase over the next three laps and so after this lap they'll be dropping down to 67s well in fact it looked like unofficially that might have been a high 67 that one 67.8 you've broken a world record i mentioned that great race with yvonne murray back in 1994 it how different is it in your mindset when you're going for a time instead of a medal? The mere mortals among us don't know the difference. You do. Well, it can be quite different, you know, if you're, you know, racing the clock or there's actually somebody else in the race with you. So here, Gidi, you know, it will come to the point where she will be just herself against the clock. Um, you know, when you're with another athlete there, you have to make your mind up what's more important. But here it's specifically on the time. And I suppose it will be, you know, how committed she can be to really up her game and to push on and to, you know, really needs to move up a little bit here now on these lights. They're right on world record pace at the moment. And um, Gide, she has, you know, let us know that she is an athlete who needs a constant, consistent pace throughout the race. She's not somebody who, you know, picks up her pace dramatically over the last few laps, like someone like Turnish Dababa would be, you know, and you gain bonus seconds in those last laps, whereas I think she really needs to stay ahead of those green lights as much as possible here tonight. Yes, especially because when you bear in mind how Turnish Dababa finished that world record 12 years ago, she ran the last kilometre in 2.42, the last 800 was 2.09, so you're absolutely right, Dababa tended to finish with a flourish. And what a fantastic record it would be to take. I, I'm really excited by Gide, even if she doesn't do it tonight. When she won those two editions of the World Junior Cross, you knew then what a special athlete she was going to be because that really takes some doing. You sometimes see athletes come through and win one World Junior, but to be around that young early when you're 17 to win the first one and then to get the second one when you're 19 you know you're dealing with somebody who's very capable and injuries notwithstanding someone who's going to be around for a long time well the world junior cross country is one of those races that you see the most fearless athletes out there you know they just attack the race and it's a step into the unknown um to see athletes you know push on from that and we just had another 68 second lap there now so we're still maintaining good pace here um you know, so I think Gide, she's really making a name for herself now. She was second at the World Championships last year. She's been out sprinted on a number of occasions um, by Sifan Hassan when she's trying to keep up with her. And, um, you know, she really wants to focus on this race herself tonight um, to do at her pace and not have to worry about somebody on her shoulder who, you know, it's not nice when you're leading when there's somebody right on your shoulder. So to have the opportunity here tonight to run this race her way and to attack the race in the way that she wants to do it. It's not easy when you're out there running by yourself. Um, but now here she looks like she actually wants to go past Beatrice Kipkoic. Maybe she's slowing a little bit here, but we'll be coming up soon now to the 3000 meter mark, which is a key um, time here. And she is well on pace here. I mean, this is going through the line there in 8.31.85, which is well and truly under the 8.32 that she has in her mind. And the thing is, this is with athletes, endurance athletes, they do the training, but you have numbers in your head that, you know, when you hit those targets, it gives you that extra bit of confidence going into the last few laps. And, uh, you know, there's five laps to go here now. Next time around, we'll be have a mile to go. It's still a long way to go, and she really has to focus here now. And this is a point where... You know, those lights pacing, wave lights could become very, very important for her to have something to focus on if she can see them. I don't know. I've never actually run on a track with lights like that. Um, if it's something that she can keep in her eyesight, you know, it's an interesting um, accessory, I suppose, to have at a track when you're trying to chase a time and you're running against the clock. Well, it's been brilliant so far. Beatrice Chip Coetch has done a fantastic job taking her through 3,000 metres. But these laps now will really start to hurt. She's got a chance here, she really has. She's running brilliantly. Nanyondo has already moved out 66 and a half. That's excellent running. Good well, work there from Nanyondo, just to sense that Gide was coming through on the inside. No time lost there, but this will really hurt. And we do have to remember 
that Tyranish to Barber's sped up towards the end. So this is by no means a certainty, but she's given herself such a great chance. She's given herself every chance here, and she is a picture of relaxation here as she heads into, you know, just coming up to a mile to go. And, you know, you just hope that she didn't get too excited there when Beatrice dropped, dropped out, you know, to ensure the, you know, continuation of the pace. But I don't know, this looks very solid right now. Um, and now she's coming down with three laps to go will be the next time. You know, when you get inside that last kilometer of the race, that's when you really, really need to dig deep. And when you can dig deep, because it's the final section of the race. Letessa Bet Guide is three laps away from a place in history here in the Estadio del Turia. It's been such a superb team effort. The Dutch, figureheaded by Global Sports Communications, Jos Hermans, have been determined that this race be as accessible as possible for people to watch and as safe as possible for the athletes to come along. They've done a fantastic job, as have the Spanish local organising team, who are more used to laying on road races. Valencia, well known for its marathons, half marathons and 10Ks. It's been a massive team effort from everybody involved. We've just gone through the 4K mark in 11.19, which is bang on target. This requires a two minutes and 50 seconds for the last kilometer, which is very, very achievable. She can do this, and if she does, it will be a just reward for so much effort from so many people. A few local athletes have been allowed in, but as you can tell, almost everybody wearing a mask. They're very hot on that here in Spain. You're not allowed without a mask unless you are exercising. Coming round now, this with two laps to go, can she do it? It's a final 800 metres. This is going to take... Yeah, this is possible. It's, it's, it's not as fast as Dibaba ran for the last 800 metres, but she doesn't need to run that fast. She needs to keep pace with these lights. The wave lights are doing a good job. Gide is doing a fantastic job to maintain pace with them. And I would love to know if she can actually see those lights and she's keeping up with them because this is fantastic to watch and it just shows us you know how she is keeping pace with this record her form has been maintained beautifully she's a lovely flowing runner to watch now it's got to her she's in uncharted territory here she's the ninth fastest in history we know all about her brilliant credentials in cross country she took a step up in class last year, taking the silver behind Sifan Hassan in the 10,000 metres. But wherever you are in the world, even though she won't hear you, give a shout out to the TV, give a roar, because this young 22-year-old from Ethiopia is 400 metres away from glory. There's the bell. This is absolutely sensational. Can she keep this going? 67 on the nose. It's been metronomic, lap after lap after lap a little glance over her shoulder she's got to be able to do this it's been a fantastic effort it's a record that has stood for 12 years this has been a year that's been so hard for so many people and here she is pouring her heart and soul out here an inspiration to young women all across ethiopia all across africa all across the world this has been a performance of such heart. Twice a global champion at cross country. Outdoors a silver medalist last year in Doha. But this would be the crowning moment so far, surely. She's got about 110 meters to go. I'm having to stand up because everybody in front of us has got their mobile phones out. Letess and Bekhide driving for history, driving for the line. Come on, come on Letess and Bekhide, you can do this. It's going to be a new world record in Valencia. Unbelievable. 14.06. She has smashed. She has smashed a record that has stood to the greatest 10,000 metre runner in history for more than 12 years. There's the embrace for Beatrice Chipkowicz. And in a year that's been so, so hard for so many people, what a moment of inspiration from a 22-year-old who has just run the race of her life. Wow! That is just something else. I mean, it just looks so easy. I mean, how she did that and, you know, maintained such focus and relaxation throughout. I mean, it's just unbelievable that she was able to maintain that throughout and by herself over those last five laps was absolutely amazing. She just got quicker and quicker and 
you know, for us to be watching the wave lines, she was just running further and further away. It was just a perfect, you know, start to the night. I think Joshua Cheptegei, you know, was the focus for tonight, but now he's got a lot to live up to when he steps up here for the 10,000 meters in a few minutes' time. Do you know what, Sonia? That was just an absolutely amazing piece of distance running because you could tell that it was, you knew it was going to be hard the last 2,000 meters after Chep Koech stepped aside, but she was just absolutely metronomic. She did exactly what she needed to. She upped the pace to 68s, up the pace to 67s. That is a huge margin to take off a record that has stood the test of time. I don't think I've ever seen anybody run so easy over 5,000 meters and run so fast, you know, at this level. Um, you know, normally you see the final 400 meters is, you know, as fast as possible. It's like, you know, they're sprinting it, but she just maintained the constant pace throughout. It was definitely a, a different way of breaking a world record, you know, just gradually increasing the pace as each lap went on. This was the last 100 meters. A couple of times she glanced around. It, it was just spellbinding. What, I, what an absolute <laughs> privilege, Sonia O'Sullivan, for both of us to be allowed here to witness that. It was just remarkable. No, it's not something you know I expected to see this year. You know, the year that we've had for athletics, and this is coming you know so late in the season. It's a bonus, and you know athletes have gone out there this year. They've taken opportunities and they've taken risks to try and push the barriers. And, you know, you see something like that and you start thinking, you know, when is the first woman going to break 14 minutes for 5,000 meters? You know, we're getting down to that territory now. Absolutely incredible. The Estadio del Turia has produced a world record and, and you're quite right, all our focus was on Joshua Cheptegei, especially the manner in which he took the 5,000 metre world record mid-August. We knew Gide had a chance, but that was such a tough mark to try and come here and tame. At the end of, you know, such a disrupted season for everybody, you know, all these big training groups have been forced to work alone, but she, she's done it. We were apparently going to try and grab an interview with her, but we've got the men coming out for the 10,000 metres. So we might try and get hold of Letess and Bet Gide towards the end of our coverage. Stay with us. We promised you an assault on two world records. One is 100% <laughs> so far. One down, one to go. And the next is going to be equally as enthralling over double the distance as Letess and Bet Gide embarks on her lap of honour.